Right, yeah, so this is the first video, the first video of the new channel, Four Sabres TV, welcome all. Uh, so this is When Star Wars Ruins Your Career. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I've not seen this, this is going to be good. What question have you grown the most tired of answering? I have to say one that I get a lot is, how am I going to deal with the possible typecasting that I might encounter in the future? I'm... Yeah, he was. He, he, he did this and that. So I don't. Has he? Has he done anything else? He's done. He's done a few bits here and there, but he's. He's not. He's not done anything that put him into the limelight as much as Star Wars. So yeah, which is a shame. I I thought he was very good in Star Wars. Uh, when he went to the dark side, that was my personal favorite time. And Sam does get everywhere. Must go, Master. No. This conversation's over. This conversation's See, I liked him in this. From being in a, in a film like... I, I thought, because he went on to do that film. Um, uh, or was it Trooper? Jumper? Jumper. Um, yeah, I, I, in that, I thought it was really... I really liked that film. There was... They were going to do... Um, I knew that... I know they were going to do a second. Uh, but I didn't know if they were going to do uh, like a trilogy of them. Uh, but I, I really like that film. It's a shame yeah, they didn't go further with it, to be honest. But yeah, like this, and from playing such an iconic role. David is awesome. And yes, I know. quite frankly, I've had enough of it. <laughs> if you haven't guessed by now, this is the actor who played Anakin Skywalker in Anakin. both Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, Hayden Christensen. His career is one that had me baffled and confused because generally when actors land a role in a big movie mm. franchise, they typically have Iron no problem big, yeah. in getting... Well, I, I mean, Iron Man was huge. He um, started the whole Marvel franchise, didn't it? The whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, John Favreau said if, it, if that Iron Man film had failed, that's it. Marvel was gone. So, And then they got bought out by Disney, didn't they, fairly quickly afterwards roles afterwards even his own co-stars would go on to have successful careers how old was she when she did that i'm gonna spend the rest of my life making she was 17 billions of dollars but hayden Se christensen she seemed unable to get hardly any roles afterwards no. in fact i have a challenge for you name one movie outside of star wars that you've seen him in jumper yeah, probably none. And if you were able to I think love of the one, it, it was a probably great wasn't film. very good. You'd think the actor who is the lead in Star Wars, the second mm. biggest movie franchise of all time, would have a very successful career. What's the first? But what's the first biggest franchise? First biggest franchise in Barbie. I think it was. Um, I'd say it'd be Lord of the Rings, wouldn't it? No. In fact, every single movie that he was in after Star Wars, except for one, was a critical failure. Jumper. Jumper got 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Damn. To understand why he was in very few films after Star Wars, it's important to understand the reception of the prequels upon release. Oh, the f yeah, the, the, the dueling in, in that film was just on another level. It was epic. I saw an interview with um, uh, Tobey Maguire, not Tobey Maguire, he's Spider-Man, uh, the guy that played, um, oh my god, I'm forgetting all the names, um, Hayden Christensen, no, oh, the, the Apprentice, oh no, I forgot the name, um, uh, uh, anyway, apparently the, um, they got so good at the routine and the dueling uh, in rehearsal that when they came to actually shoot the lightsaber, se lightsaber fight scenes, they actually had to slow down. Uh, they were going so fast that they were made to slow down for it. And I'm like, you know what? That's, that's great that you slowed down, but I would have loved to have seen you go full hell for it. If you could do all that twice as fast... That would have been insane. Can you imagine uh, Darth Maul going twice as fast fighting two, um, two Jedis? That would be epic. That would be so cool. I would love to see that. You would have well. Yeah. Well, it's it's the best, for me, that I can think of. It's the best 
the best fight scene in any of the Star Wars uh, Star Wars films. Do you agree? Yeah. Prince Charles tonight had the best seat in the house for the film just about everyone wants to see. To set some context, Saw a video of him dancing recently. <laughs> the year is 1999. Among the stars at the royal premiere God, of The Phantom Menace was Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor, that's it. I was sick Sorry. from school today. It's been nearly 16 years since the release of the last Star Wars movie. People have been awaiting this it for felt like 16 years. years. You gotta understand, the release of this movie was an event. It's gonna be one, Go of, on, the, one of the many wonders of the world similar to if not more of an event than something like endgame or no way home oh right okay yeah it, it's not lord of the rings so it it'll be marvel the mcu will be the biggest franchise uh in history uh followed by star wars being second um i'd say in that case lord of the rings will be third uh as the next biggest franchise so this movie would kickstart a trilogy of films that would tell the tragedy of one of the most praised villains of all time. The movie so cool. had a ton of weight on its shoulders. You, you did the same. <laughs> Look, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I like Star Wars. I don't think I'd drop to my knees saying, yay, I'm in. Uh, I, I, they remastered the originals um, and they came out of cinemas uh, years ago, uh, about around 1995, 96. Oh, no, no, about 93. And they relaunched them in the cinemas. And me and my mate, we went and watched all three of them. And that was fantastic. So, you missed that. I don't know if it was... Uh, it, it came out in the UK. I'm sure they've been in America, though, where you are. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs way down. You didn't like it? No, I, I think I deserve a public apology from George Lucas. While it might not seem like it now, the movie was torn apart by critics. Yeah, because you're going to get a public apology from George Lucas. Yeah, you, hell, you, why didn't you, would it be okay if he came and knocked on your front door with a, a bag of flowers, with a, a bouquet of flowers and said, I'm really sorry for what you had to go through and lose an hour and a half of your life for what took me years to put together. I'm really sorry. Would that do it for you? For your £12 admission for a ticket? Critics at the time. You'd accept the main that, complaint right, okay. towards it was its awful dialogue. high standards on the It's very Shakespearean. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. Stiff. Are you sure she was seventeen? You should you said she was seventeen when she did it. You are. I thought she was eighteen. I, the I still don't understand the whole he met her when he was a kid. And then she was exactly the same when he was an adult. And then she got with him. What is and unnatural. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. Upon the release of the next two films. Right. I, I didn't know that. So apparently the guy that played Darth Maul. So what you're saying is that he was actually the trainer for the people to do the role. And then George Lucas just went, sod it, actually, you're the guy to do the role. So instead of him training people to do the Darth Maul role, George Lucas made him Darth Maul. That's cool. Uh, isn't that a bit like Harrison Ford? Because Harrison Ford was a good friend of George Lucas from doing a couple of films. But I, I heard a story that George Luke, uh, that Harrison Ford was fitting some doors um, in, uh, in the interview room or something where they're interviewing for uh, Star Wars. And uh, George Lucas said, oh, can you just read this? So he was just reading this. He was like doing the counter to the person in, uh, being interviewed. And um, yeah, he was, uh, he was basically like, George was like, look, you are Han Solo. You, you've done, you've read the lines. You, you, you're perfect for it. And they just made him it. I don't know how true that is because then I found out that he'd done a number of films with George Lucas before that. So I, I, I kind of like that story though. You know, like he's a struggling actor. Doing being a carpenter and then managed to get the role of a lifetime just by being in the right place at the right time. I think that's a bit more. I think that's a bit better personally.
in the trilogy. They also were criticized for their terrible dialogue, but they also had another complaint that wasn't present in The Phantom Menace. Hayden Christensen. What? Critics agreed that he was very stiff and awkward. Audiences didn't like the fact that the menacing villain from their childhood. What well, you think? You, what well, you you thought so? You thought he was quite stiff. I just took his performance as being he was very nervous a lot of the time and uh, always a bit unsure of where he should be and what he should be doing. Is how I took his performance. But I never saw him as being stiff. But you know, if, you, if that's how you felt, then fair enough. You along with the critics, sir. Huh? was turned into a sad, brooding teenager. He's holding me back! This doesn't suck. This is very cool, because, because you know, you guys voted for it, and, and so... His performance was so hated upon that he won the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Supporting Actor in Attack of the Clones, as well as Revenge of the Sith. He was better in Return. The reason what, in the, uh, the TV series, um, he was better. Uh, see, that's actually one of the few TV series uh, that Disney's done that I did watch. I was really excited for it. I think it was a huge wasted opportunity. Um, I think they could have done a lot more. And they, I don't think they put an extremely large budget. I like the... Um, a lot of things that they brought out seem to have a lot bigger budget than what, what they did for the uh, Darth Vader vs. Obi-Wan Kenobi. TV series, which I don't understand because if they'd, if that's the one series you'd put everything in, all your eggs, all in the basket, as much as you could to just knock it out of the park, uh, personally in my opinion, and if you if they'd done that right, they would have won so many fans back and got so much loyalty back for it, and they just wasted it, they squandered that opportunity, it was, uh, it was really bad, so for his decline. No one would want an actor who starred in poorly received blockbusters in their movie, let alone one who received the Worst Supporting Actor award. He must, well, yeah, like I said, George Lucas must have seen something in, in him uh, to cast him as Anakin. Yeah, exactly. Twice. It's gotta be what put his career in shambles, right? Okay, uh, I feel really attacked. Well, no. Ewan McGregor would go on to have a very successful career mm. starring in big budget and well-received movies alike. I wrote a lot that night. I had so much <coughs> to say. Natalie Portman, who was nominated for Worst Supporting Actress in Attack of the Clones as well, would also have a very successful oh, God, career, even winning Thunder. Best Actress in 2011 for her performance in Thunder. Black Swan. Was so so bad. why is it that Hayden Christensen, Such a bad who feel. was the lead of these movies, didn't have the same... Yeah, Tiger, t I agree with you. Tiger Waititi should never, ever, ever be allowed to write and direct his own material again. Get some talented writers and get them to write it and then let him direct it. He's good at directing. Don't ever let him write one again. Tiger Waititi is horrendous. Thor, Love and Thunder was just a... It was, oh, it was so bad. So bad. Story. I do think that... For me, Star Wars is brought freedom in many ways. Well, what did it bring to you? It would be easier to count the ways that it didn't affect my life. Let's take a look at the rest of his career. Hayden Christensen is out to prove that he is much more than a lightsaber-wielding sci-fi star. He's flexing his acting muscles in shattered glass. Which no idea. actually looked promising at first. Between the releases of Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith was the movie Shattered Glass, which is the one movie he was in that was a critical success. Oh, 92%, wow. Well, maybe, yeah, I mean... I think when, when you've been in something as big as Star Wars, I think you've got to be very careful in what you pick to be in next i mean look at the most recent franchise um the how how many people out of the most recent franchise have done well uh the girl the person that played ray she's she's not really had she's i think she's done one been in one mediocre film with um tom hiddleston not tom hiddleston 
uh, the, the guy that played Spider-Man. Um, and uh, she's not really done anything else. Her career basically stalled. Um, the the only there's only been one or two people out of the most recent Star Wars films that actually have come off it on uh, and done well. So yes, out of every movie he stars in, this is the only one that was a critical success. I'm not a criminal, Chuck. This drama is based on the real events of the journalist Stephen Glass who is the character Hayden Christensen is performing in this movie. I can say for one that it was actually a pretty good movie. As for Hayden's performance, I have some notes. I was actually very impressed by it. The character he plays is a stiff and awkward nerd, and he plays him with a certain sense of real accuracy. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a compliment to his performance in this movie, but you didn't not think it was very so good much it. for him as an actor. I've, and while this I've movie was a success it. on the critical side, it was a huge loss. So you thought he was, it was just like watching Anakin in another TV film. Right, okay. Box office. Heath Ledger was a, oh. It made back less than half of the Heath Ledger was a joker. Alone. Amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now for... Uh, for me, for, as a fact, the Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker is still, even now, the most amazing performance I have ever seen by any one person in any one film for the last 10, 15 years that I can think of. I can't think of one person that's done a better job of uh, being more amazing in a role. The only person that might come close is Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Um, because obviously Iron Man's just awesome. I love Iron Man. Yeah, I, I saw the um, the unveiling of Robert Downey Jr. going to be uh, Victor Von Doom. Mm, yeah, I saw that. Um, uh, look, if 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 you're happy to watch that, if it's something you want to watch, if it's something that does it for you great brilliant for me it's it's a sign that they're just flogging a dog ho dead horse they're desperate to try and make some money and that will bring back robbie downey jr and that's the only way they could think to bring him back um and i'll be honest i think a lot of people i think it will put a lot of people in the seats because of robert downey jr but i do not think it'll do very well as uh, on a whole Unless it's got a m absolutely amazing writing um, and a, a really good cast for the rest of the f Fantastic Four. But I've heard that the cast isn't particularly great. Uh, and let's be honest, the writing coming out of Hollywood in the last three, four years has just been trash. So I don't think it'll do well. It'll come out, I think a lot of the reviews will be cash grab. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was great, but he should be Iron Man. Uh, the rest of the cast were borderline okay, and it was a very bad film. I don't think it'll do well. I could be wrong. We'll see. This is the first video on the new channel. Uh, there'll be a video, maybe a trailer reaction coming to it. So we'll see what happens. And that's not even taking marketing into account. You think he's going to do well? I hope it does. And if, if people enjoy it, great. I'm happy for them. He tried to replicate his success in the drama genre, but that didn't quite work out for him. And then he tried dipping his toes in the genre of action thrillers. But uh, as an audience member, I had, you know, action movies are the ones that I really enjoy. And... The decision of him trying out this genre was actually very smart. He looked from a lot, yeah. Standpoint. When Agent Christian came back Generally, to Star Wars, action he, he had aged with popular a lot. Casts at the very least, gained recognition. It was such which a waste the first of action thriller he tried did exactly that. If there is one movie Jumper outside was cool. of Star Wars that you've seen him in or heard I of him really like I'm surprised no one did. Jumper. Jumper gained a good amount of recognition. It was a success at the box office, earning more than $200 million. The director yeah. of this movie was Doug Lyman. If you don't know who he is, then you definitely heard of some of his oh, movies. 
The cast is long. fairly popular. Samuel L. Jackson even had a big role in it, mm. and it was an adaptation of a fairly successful novel. Because of all these reasons, it's his most high-profile movie outside of Star Wars. The problem is that it was a critical failure. I jump us. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think for fifteen percent, I think that's that's very harsh. It's almost like the critics had a a mission to go against him uh, on that. Uh, I, I thought it was a great film. I've watched it a number of times. It's only just occurred to me now that Samuel Jackson was in it, I and mean, that's the second time he's been in a film with Samuel Jackson. Um, it completely it's just occurred to me now. I mean, it is for effects are mostly yeah. impressive but the writing is awful. They write the main the character, was who good. is played by Hayden Christensen, as a selfish jerk who uses teleporting powers for his own personal gain. But it was a box office success, and it was fairly popular. While it is a rocky start, it was at least popular, and it could have been a worse start to this genre. So how did his other action thrillers do? Well, his next four, Takers, Outcast, American Heist, and First Kill, should have all been successes. Not I mean, he you. stars alongside genuinely big actors like Idris Elba, Nicolas Cage, Adrian Brody, and Bruce Willis. But they were all critical dumpster fires. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, think, I think he would have had more success if he'd stuck to sci-fi uh films so uh things like jumper and uh star wars i think that's where he shined more than the other types of movies um jumper was really good i i really wanted a a, a number two or second for jumper i think they could have really gone into a good uh gone into a lot with that uh, it's a shame they, they just gave up On the box office side, Takers made just enough money to break even when you factor in marketing. But Outcast, American Heist, and First Kill didn't even receive a theatrical release and went straight to DVD. I did not. I thought it came out of the cinemas. No, straight to DVD. Oh, right. I, I thought you could say it. I didn't realize that. You know, I really don't like the way you're treating me, Chuck. I didn't do anything wrong, okay? He tried so starring in a few cry. more dramas, chick flicks, and even a horror movie. Those all flopped as well. Never I even heard of any of those. I really wish you'd stop saying I think that. he picked some really bad films. He, he... I think I, I think it was a case that he was so desperate to become a to be taken seriously and become a huge star. He just took a lot of he made a lot of bad decisions and took a lot of films that he maybe should have done. Yeah. Like yeah, like I said, Jumper was a good one. Uh, he made a good choice doing that. Um, yeah. Quit acting. Well, let's go work Ultimately, at 7 Eleven or something. In 2010, he decided to dial back on acting quite a bit. He didn't completely quit acting, but the projects he appeared in after this were very few. He said in an interview with Yahoo, quote, I felt like I had this great thing in Star Wars that uh, go, let's, provided let's me go all back. these opportunities it and gave me a career. Very few. But just between us lot now, uh, forget that this is the last man to that night or anything like that. Just look at that. Do you not think, and this is very random, if they were to ever do um, an, a Wolverine film, but of Wolverine when he was younger how cool how much does he look like Wolverine Hugh Jackman there yeah he does yeah if you if he if he put a bit if he but bulked up put muscle on um got shredded and he, he had that look but did the beard a bit more I think he could do a brilliant younger Wolverine Wolverine's over 200 years old. I mean, come on. I would love to see him in Wolverine. Sci-fi role again. Bit of action. He'd be perfect for that. He's proven it. You think? Yeah? Yeah? I, I, I think he'd be brilliant. I, 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 would, I would definitely line up and I would pay for that. 
But saying that, that's in 2018, isn't it? It's a bit late now. He's a lot older. But I think he'd be uh, a great Wolverine. He said in an interview with Yahoo, Missed out quote, on, yeah, missed I out felt on like I had this great they? thing in Star Wars that provided me all these opportunities and gave me a career. But it all kind of felt a little too handed to me. He couldn't I didn't do the voice. Go through life. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, he most probably couldn't. He wouldn't sound like Hugh Jackman, would he? So maybe, maybe looking like him would be enough. Feeling like I was. Hugh Jackman's two years old. You don't know his accent may change. Over he time. tried to escape the trap that many big movie stars encounter when they land a role in a popular franchise. Try watching another movie with Chris Evans in it. It's very hard not to see him as Captain America. He tried to create an acting... Yeah, I've just watched Deadpool, and in that, Chris Evans was... Uh, I hope you've seen Deadpool. If not, don't listen to this bit. But he was in uh, in the new Deadpool Wolverine film, every, and uh, they actually played out that he was going to be Captain America in it. And he wasn't. He was the uh, Human Torch. <laughs> so... <laughs> ...that wasn't tied to Star Wars. I think after I finished Star Wars, there was still a desire for me to sort of go back so to kind of s- smaller, more independent filmmaking. But ultimately, the Star Wars shadow was too large for See, him I, to look escape. how cool he looks there, man. I just sort of tried to not so much think it about badass as, a career sit, yeah. as much as I was just trying to do work that appealed to me mm. and play characters. That, I think that he, when I, I think when he became Darth Vader, I think he should have been older. Uh, I think they should have done him when um, he was in his 40s, when he became Darth Vader, personally. Didn't expect to see you so soon. I've not seen Ahsoka, no. He's recently returned really good. back as Anakin. I've heard it's really good. Obi-Wan, I've, I've, I've heard so really good show. reviews about him. Um, Maybe I should. Maybe we should put that on here. Me watch when me uh, decided to be go through a soak or watching reviews series. on it. What was put my thoughts behind on that? that decision? If these shows were made ten or so years ago, his return would not You'd like be to see as that. impactful. Well, just, just never say never. Getting the invitation. Most people were still on the fence about the Star Wars prequels at that time, but as time has gone on and those people have gotten older, they've accepted the prequels as the origin of Darth Vader, and their nostalgia glasses have been screwed on tighter. I always like the prequels. The general audience because they were the Star story of Darth Vader are now more than excited to see him appear in them. He used that to his advantage to gain recognition once again. Sometimes you need to accept when you've been beaten. Yeah, apparently Hugh Grey had to relearn his accent when he uh, came back as uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello, you. T- All right, well that was uh, that was it. So that was an abrupt end, but yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think uh, I I think he could make a comeback, and sadly, I think he could make a comeback in Star Wars, um, but we'll we'll have to see see what happens with it. So uh, yeah, hey, see you in the next one, guys.